Less talk. Give it here. This one is a circuit board, so no magnets, right? Fumbo's Quest. It's a game cartridge. That means it loads much faster than the tape. So you would need to wait for the game to start? How long? Seconds? For the cartridge here, yeah. For the tape, maybe five minutes. <laughs> minutes? People had longer attention spans back then. You would need a different computer to play this one? Yes, a game console, and a rare one at that. C64. What was this game about? A C64. It was a side-scrolling platformer. Oh, uh, what, what, what? You would move either left or right, jumping your sprite up and down as you collected... stuff. The games were very abstract back then. You had to use your imagination a lot. What was the central metaphor of Fumbo's quest, then? You had to collect assembly level instructions to program a computer, freeing a consciousness called Pili. By uploading a consciousness to a machine, you save the world. Awesome. That's a bit far-fetched. You have to remember, these games were all symbolic. The hero's journey and all that. So is this worth more than the game about punching? A little more, yeah. Good find. You want to play this one? I'm good. I'll just take the limbs for now. Hello everybody, Burnt Out Guy here, and welcome back to Cloud Punk. Alright, so uh, we're just rocking and rolling in this game, boys, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, the intro was uh, that last little quest right here uh, with her. Um, I kind of missed it by like the fraction of a second. I mean, it just, you know, whatever. It's all good. So we're going to go and uh, we're going to uh, go and I guess uh, collect Gil's belongings. So that's going to be the start of this episode. Last episode we talked to Teko like three times in like three different locations. And then we went, where else did we go? I think we uh, delivered a sex doll. <laughs> that was kind of interesting. And then uh, I think we did a few other things, but I kind of can't remember exactly what those things were, but uh, it's, uh, it's been so long. Oh, there's my exit. Um, sometimes I do like a, a couple spans in between videos. Anyways, enough babbling. We'll, we'll meet you over there and we'll, uh, we'll get on with Gil's, Gil's stuff. <laughs> Alright, so before getting to this little area, I handed in the uh, detonator. I guess I messed up. I didn't record it, so that sucks. Um, it was a funny little conversation, so it was worth an achievement. So you did have to hand in the detonator. It wasn't something that you had to keep with you for something else. It was uh, that quest. So uh, we're here near Gil. He's over here now. So there's also this other guy in front here. We're going to talk to him called the Faulkner. So let's go talk to him. Hey, are you interested in having your photo taken with this magnificent creature? Nice. Just 100 limbs. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know his name? He is Norman. Norman. Hi, Norman. Is he a real bird? Norman isn't a bird. He's a falcon. A real one? Well, he's not a hologram. But is he a real falcon, or is he artificial? Ah, I understand your question now. Uh, you must think this is based on an animal. This is not. It is a unique creation. A falcon. I've seen <laughs> falcons before. No, you must be mistaken. Perhaps you have seen a sparrow. They are very similar. <laughs> you see, I specialize in chimeras. What are chimeras? Well, you know, there's a huge market for artificial animals, especially those that are rare or extinct. Chimeras are different. They are artificial animals which uh, never existed, created from the imagination of man. True. But I told you, I've seen a real falcon. Eh? Where? Well, they're extinct now, I guess, but I saw them all the time when I was young. I'm from the Eastern Peninsula. They would circle around the farm in the summer, uh, until the big dust storms hit back in the year of the dragon. <laughs> Listen, lady, I need you to do me a favor. Uh, okay. What? Please leave, and don't tell anyone that there are real falcons, huh? Sure, but why does it make any difference? When people know they're looking at something that once existed instead of something that never could, they get depressed. Uh -huh. And sad people don't spend money. True. Very true. So he was worth an achievement as well. Let's go and uh, see Gil here. Are you the delivery person? Rania, yeah, I'm to take your package. 
It's everything. My limbs, calm, holocrons, augments. Everything I own. Awesome. Make sure my family gets it. Just we'll do. drop it in the post. I can't leave the queue or I'll lose my place. Are you sure about this? Yeah. A chance to see the spire. I, I gotta take the shot. I get to go above the clouds. Is it safe? Sure, yeah. Of course. <laughs> okay then. Good luck, I guess. Hey, thanks. Maybe I'll see you around. Maybe. Huh. Yeah. I don't know about that. I hear a lot of weird things about that spire, so... Alright, so the other thing's down. Oh, control. Hey, Radio, you met that guy going on the Ascension? Is he really going through with it? He says the Ascension takes him to the spire. It sure does. And no further. What do you mean? It's an escalator to nowhere. It just ends. Then what? Well, then he falls a few miles down into the sea. Who would build an escalator that goes nowhere? You think everything in the city is logical? Well, look around, Rania. None of this makes sense. The city AI has gone mad. He said it was safe. Before he gave you all his possessions? He knew? He knew. <laughs> I don't get it. You lived outside Navalis, right? So you've, you've seen the sky. You've got that memory. I've never seen the sky. I can live without it. But imagine you'd seen it just once. What would you do to see it again? <sighs> How's the sake control? <laughs> you don't drink, right? You should try it sometime, Rania. When things are going wrong, it's a great way to keep yourself trapped in the long right now. Are you a poet now, Control? <laughs> you know it. Uh, nice, what should I do nice. with his possessions? Well, he stiffed us on the bill. His payment was rejected. So if you got anything from him, you should return it to a Cloudpunk delivery chute nearby to cover his debt. What about his family? Let me make this as clear as I can, Rania. I don't know if he gave you something or if he gave you nothing. But I knew if he gave you something, I'd have to tell you to return it to Cloudpunk HQ. Control out. Uh-huh. He sounded... different. Are we going to take Gil's things back to Cloudpunk HQ? Well, everything's packaged and postmarked. So, if we dropped them at the mail office, they'd get back to his family and Cloudpunk would never know. But maybe it would be good for us to give it to Cloudpunk? And if we broke the rules, we could get in trouble. Or get Mr. Control in trouble. Quiet for now, Chemis. I have to think. She's always got to think. Alright, let's talk to Jimmy. Hey, got a minute? Sure, sure, you got a minute. Who doesn't have a minute? It's uh, less than 60 seconds. Near enough, right? <laughs> Time's Jimmy a ticking. Jimmy is the name. Jimmy, roll high. I don't really have a minute. You're uh, wondering about the hands, right? You gotta know, everyone does. <laughs> <laughs> they, they always ask me about the hands. I always say the same thing. I, I do. I always say, if the shuffle wasn't working, they wouldn't have needed to break them. I'm right, right? Were you cheating at cards? Roll high. Wasn't I clear before when I says my name? <laughs> sure I was. You was listening. <laughs> You're a clever lady. I got in trouble because I could roll double sixes every single time. Nice. Really? Near enough. Near enough that they broke my hand for it. Then when I learned with the other, they broke that too. Now, if I could just get some limbs for augments, I know I can make the money back for you at the table. I'm not interested. Sorry. You'll be back. They always come back. I got the skills, lady. <laughs> You're gonna invest in them one day. I'm telling you. <laughs> Alrighty. He was an achievement too, just to talk to him, which is crazy enough. Uh, all right, so I think uh, we'll do a little bit of investigation around here and check things out, and then um, I'll go deliver the package to Cloudpunk. That way, uh, maybe we can get uh, better ins with the company and uh, maybe make some more money. All right, so just down here, uh, apparently this is like a Cloudpunk drop-off. Nice. Okay, so the blue one is that the into the mailbox. All right, so we're gonna go over here.
Cloud Punk it is. I hate doing this. Being a delivery driver? No, paying off a dead man's debts. At least we won't get in trouble. I hate this city. Yeah, well, you know, it's not you making the decisions there, sweetheart. Oh, let's repair this lift. Pretty cool, man. That's pretty cool. I like these little options, little things that you can do in this game. Little backstory things. Find out what's going on in these different areas. Oh, hey, Control. Hey, run, Leah. Uh, um, are you there? Yeah. <laughs> you don't sound good, Control. Oh, well, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, if I could just sleep. I used to be able to sleep, you know. Are you sure you're okay? What is wrong with him? I think he's had some drinks. He sounds strange. Like he is confused. Uh, broadcasting nav point. Collect the package, 14FC. Uh, get on with it. Who from? Where am I going? Always questions from you. Just do your goddamn job. Control out. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a little hammed, all right. That's pretty funny. All right, so <laughs> let's let's go get this next package. All right, it's good. I got all the stuff in that area. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, we're here with Mrs. Octavius Butler. Let's talk to her. I'm the delivery driver. I'm here to pick up something. Yes, you're here to take our original corbet. Huh? <laughs> it's a painting, dear. You'll be taking me and Mr. Butler, too. I don't think I'm supposed to take passengers. What is all this nonsense? Mr. Octavius Butler, this was all supposed to be arranged. Didn't you tell the company that we simply can't let this painting out of our sight? I did, my love, I did. There must be some confusion. I'm sure our young driver friend will consent to take us. It won't be a problem, and we'd hate to raise a complaint. Is that not right, young miss? I guess so. Let's be going, then. I want to see our new apartment as soon as possible. Apparently, Trisha and the Joneses have moved in next door already. And I don't want her spreading gossip about our new home and how it still smells like smoked fish. Okay. Uh, delivery or passengers oh first? This is cozy. I've never been in a vehicle like this. Very retro. I agree. Very nice indeed. Oh. Do you understand us, young lady, or should we speak slower? I understand fine. <laughs> Dear, you must be very curious, are you not? How a woman like me and an android like Mr. Octavius Butler met? Sure. Well, why not? <laughs> Well, I can tell from your accent that you're not from the city, but we're quite enlightened here, you know. Isn't that right, Mr. Octavius Butler? That's right, my love. Interesting. Some might say that Mr. Octavius Butler is human passing, but I don't care about that. I love him for who <gasps> he is inside, not <gasps> what his outer skin is made of. <laughs> it's a pollen plastic. <laughs> oh, you are hilarious. What Oh, yes, we met at a charity fundraiser. Oh, that was horrible we driving. We both work for Life Corp. I'm in HR, and Mr. Octavius Butler is in acquisitions. We had executive offices next door. We started meeting for coffee, and one thing led to another. Wow. And now, just a week until our fifth anniversary, we're on our way to our new home. Good Aren't stuff. Are you happy for us? Uh, yeah. Definitely. We're suddenly happier than the family that's moving out. Oh, don't start all that again. This area is up and coming now. The people living there couldn't afford it, and they wouldn't fit in either. With hyper-gentrification, <sighs> they're forced out instantly instead of being pushed out over months and years. It's a short, sharp shock. But it's for the best for everyone who argue against free markets don't really believe in freedom. What freedom does this bring to the people who can't plan for a future? That's just life in Novalis. If you don't like it, go live somewhere else. 
Not everyone is suited for life in the city. That's Some very people true. Like to live here. Well, maybe in the nice places, but who needs to live in the filth of the marrow? No one stays there without good reason. And the reason is they all dream of getting rich with some scheme or other to make their way up to the spire. That's the Navalis dream. Our society has a million slots and each must be filled. Every time someone moves up a peg, someone fills in the gap behind them. And every time someone at the bottom slips, where do they go? I read in the holocron just today that the most common food in the marrow is now roach meat kebabs, noodles <laughs> with rat. Those kinds of people love street food. No offense, dear. None taken. I love a maggot pizza. We're almost <laughs> at our destination. Splendid. Oh, yes, we are at our, our destination. You see, Mr. Octavius Butler? Look at this fabulous place. Different and together, but separate. That's how we exist together in this city without all the systems breaking down. That's what they used to say about androids, you know. Oh, don't hearken back to your revolutionary days again. <laughs> you have rights now, just like humans. Androids are just a part of society, low and high. We are all the same, you know. As long as we all have the same bank balance. That's well, horrible. You're welcome to give away all your money to the orphans and the rat children. You can come and stay in my penthouse as long as you take off your shoes and have a shower before you touch me. Very generous of you, my love. Awesome. Have either of you ever actually been to the Marrow? Oh, heavens no, dear. I have family in the Spire, and Mr. Octavius Butler is from a very distinguished line of androids. Amazing. He's descended from the very first Cora models. Wait, what does that mean? Why do you mention Cora? It's just a saying, isn't it, Mr. Octavius Butler? In a way... It means he's refined, dear, just like me. We have no prejudice here. We're very enlightened people in the city, you know. Yeah, you said that before. <laughs> Do you think the family will still be there when we arrive? I shouldn't think so. Two hours of rent at peak rate and they'd be bankrupt. I'm sure they're long gone, either moved on or forced out by Corpsec for violating their lease. I bet they'll be somewhere nice. Not everyone ends up in the marrow, you know. Maybe one day they'll seize the means of production down there. <laughs> oh, you are witty. The production of mold burgers and rat salad. No offense, dear. <laughs> yeah, none taken. Thank you for getting us to our destination, driver. It's been fun to drive in a vehicle that's much more rustic than our limo. Our painting made it here safely, too. And what a lovely neighborhood. Quite so. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> stuck up people, eh? Bloody stuck up people. So let's return to our hobby here. We'll uh, finish this quest off. See what it has to say. God, this is why I'm not a taxi driver. <laughs> I didn't like them. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't think they would like automata or dogs <laughs> or anyone poorer than them, less educated, less well connected, less stuck up. Oh my Different gosh. In any way. That's but very one true. Of them was an android. I know, Camus. I have a question. Go ahead. Did you really eat maggot pizza? No, Camus. <laughs> I was playing along. Oh, a joke. I laugh at them. Me too. It's all we can do. Hmm. So... It is very quiet. It makes me nervous. We can listen to the ad streams if you like. Are they interesting? Sure, if you want to learn all about everything we can never afford. <laughs> what about... music? No thanks. We can check the weather feed if you like. If you want it, I can put it on. Fine, but we're not tuning into any of the Corp music feeds. They're all ads and Corp approved pop stars. They sound so empty. Hollow. How do we find other feeds? I only know about Corp channels. The radio, Camus. The what? Oh, An boy. electromagnetic wave of a frequency between about 300 kilohertz and 300 megahertz? You can tune that in, right? 
Yes, I have found it. I am hearing it now. How strange. It's the easiest way to broadcast without the corpse shutting you down. They've been playing music with radio waves for thousands of years, you know. How did you know? Mom told me if I ever visited Novalis, I should tune in to the pirate radio. She said it was the only good thing about the city. Go ahead, play something over the speakers. What about... this? I like it. Maybe something a bit more relaxed, though. I know this one. I like the bit that goes, ba, ba, ba. Yeah, it's nice, Camus. But let's see what else there is. Oh, oh, what about this? Do we know who this is? No, it is radio. Right, sorry. Dumb question. Do you like this one more? I like this one. I like it too, but keep searching. There is one more. Yes, this is perfect. Mom would have liked this. We have a new job coming in. From Control? He normally calls. The checksum confirms it's Cloudpunk. I have a nav point. Let's go then. <laughs> He's uh, maybe just a little bit uh, too much uh, into the sauce. So we're going to call it there, ladies and gentlemen, for this episode. So please like and subscribe, and we will see you next time in Cloudpunk.